fortunate enough to have uh, Bupat Sima on the show after winning the Dubai World Cup with an exclamation point and leave it to me to make the banner of his name on the bottom wrong. Uh, I apologize. Absolute gentleman about it. Uh, didn't even bother mention it till 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 till, till after the show. Just a really first class guy, gentleman. I think you'll like the show. He's a fascinating guy. Obviously a great trainer. Coming off a monumental win, and a big shout out to Rohan on uh, on on X, formerly known as Twitter, whatever you want to call it, social media, um, for hooking this up to me. Supporter of Past the Wire good guy and uh it was very nice of him to you know hook this up so thank you both and i hope everybody enjoys the show and apologies about the name uh my bad zandon's poetry in motion big horse but light on his feet and he's always showed up and been consistent and been right there with some of the top horses in training in the bluegrass stakes he showed his determination and his raw ability it's over zandon wins the toyota bluegrass I feel readers will be really blown away by what a striking, outstanding looking horse he is. Thank you for visiting Past the Wire TV, the YouTube channel of PastTheWire.com. Everybody, welcome to Past the Wire TV. We are fortunate enough this morning or this afternoon in Dubai to be joined by Pubat Bupat Sima. I apologize, I mess up everybody's name. The complicated horses, forget about it. I'm the worst. But thank you so much for coming on the show. No, thank you for having me. It's okay. I've I've, I've been called worse. Don't worry. <laughs> me, me, me too. A lot. Uh, listen. Let's just start off with this. You didn't just win the Dubai World Cup. You won the Dubai World Cup with an exclamation point. So congratulations on on, 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 on a phenomenal victory. Now, thank you very much. Thank you very much. I think we've got a we've got a very, very good horse and uh, he did it in style. Uh, he he re he really did. Uh, one thing I noticed leading up to the race. You were extremely confident and and not at all shy about it, you, you know, heading into the race. Talk a little bit about, you know, what was happening with Laurel River that, that gave you that kind of confidence. Well, you know, when, uh, first of all, his previous victory, um, he won the mile race really, really impressively. Um, and, you know, in my opinion, I thought uh, the further he goes, the better he's going to get. So... I thought the 10 furlong, 10 furlong distance was right up his alley. But obviously, you know, every expert, every trainer thinks that, but you have to see it getting done. So, you know, quietly, I was very confident uh, because his training was, I had never seen a horse train like him. His recovery was just incredible. He would, he would do his gallop and he would just come back like he's never done anything. You know, he would have his ears pricked and his, his you know, he, would, he won't even have a puff. So... I had never seen. I've I'd, I'd seen a lot of horses in my life, but I had never seen anything like that. Really, uh, and, and 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 he ran that way. What was it like for you to, you you know, experience such such a win in such a big race, and for for such a uh, just an epic an epic farm in Judmont? I mean, just. You know, if you want to talk about the you know most prestigious and classiest outfits in racing over the past, you know, 50, 100 years, Judmont Farm has to be in that conversation. Yes, absolutely. I, I, you know, I agree. When um, when I got a chance to train for Judmont, I, I, I couldn't believe my luck. I was, uh, you know, so I, I do owe them a lot. The team at Judmont is next to none. And uh, the princes now, they're very forward thinking, uh, which is incredible. And, you know, since I was a Young young boy, I was watching those famous colors win some of the best races in the world. So, I mean, I'm I'm so very grateful for them to have the faith and the trust in me to 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 send me this wonderful horse. 
and 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 you you certainly delivered and showed that you know you belong and 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 deserve that kind of horse. So kudos to you for that, uh, Bupat. But let me ask you, you, tell us a little bit about how you got into racing. What's your background like? Uh, and then ultimately, how you wound up training for Judmont? Well, um, I grew up. I went to school and college. I grew up near uh, near Delhi. My parents got a my parents got a farm in uh, in a state called Punjab, and they they have a farm in Rajasthan as well. So I grew up um, I grew up around farm around horses. And then when I was nine years old, I went to boarding school, and a lot of my family members have been to the same boarding school, which is quite which is quite a norm in in my part of the world where I live. Okay. And, uh, not that I was a I was a problem child. It's just that <laughs> to make a man out of you, you, you go to a boarding school. Um, okay. Uh, more of like a finishing school. And then I went to college in in Delhi, did my business uh, degree there. Uh, in the meantime, my my uncle, my father's youngest brother, Satish Seymour, he was already in he was already in Kentucky uh, working for TaylorMade Farms, and he'd worked for Monty Roberts previously before that, and. Um, I I asked him. I said, "Look, I want to I want to do the horse business. Um, I don't want to be sitting in an office." While I was doing quite well sitting in an office, but it wasn't about it wasn't about money. Um, and you know, I joined the intern program at Telemate Farms and started right from the bottom. Um, cleaned plenty of stables and you know did uh, did did all the graft. And then I got a chance to work for um, a trainer called Chris Beckett in Lexington. Okay. And after that, after six months, I went. To, I, I got a chance to work for Bob Baffert in California. So I stayed. Chris, there for Chris, five. correct me if I'm wrong. He trained at one time for Buckland Farm when they were a prominent owner, correct? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. yes. Yeah. Okay. No, that's correct. That's right. right. They call him Naughty. Um, <laughs> okay. Yeah, and then after that, I went to California to work for Bob Baffert and did that for five years. Okay. Then I got a chance to come to Dubai to. To work for the ma- you know, to work for the family of the world's richest uh, or the biggest racehorse owner, the Maktoum family. Right. Uh, and I couldn't believe the chances I got in my life. And I was an assistant trainer to my uncle Satish Seymour for about eighteen years, and then I've been training for three years myself. Fast, fa- fa- fascinating background. Most interesting. What, what, you know, Bob has had you know monumental success at every level of the game. Uh, all over the world. What did you take away from from working for Bob for five years? What was your your number one takeaway? Well, like you said yourself, I mean, you know, he's a he's a legend of the sport. He is um, he is a very very good horse trainer, as we all can see. And I don't have to I don't have to say it, but I mean, you know, attention to detail. You know, his um, he. I w- I would think his attention to detail. He never forgets anything. He's um, he's a he's a he's a very very um, he's obviously a very very good horse trainer. But he's also a very uh, smart person. You can ask him questions about a lot of things in life, and you know he'll have an answer. So I think I think he's just a very smart human being who's just and who's have. Uh, his, I remember meeting his parents, and you know he he he's come from a very very good background, but he also started from the bottom and. Made it to the top with his own now, hard work. What was it like winning the Dubai World Cup, one of the biggest stages in sports and and, and certainly in horse racing, and Bob having a horse in the race and, and 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 you won it with a horse that at one time was in his barn. Yes, and uh, Bob Bob called me uh, two days after the race and and he was he was very proud and you know he 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 congratulated me. Um, I mean, you know, so I was, I was, I was joking with him. I said, "I said, you, you won this race about four times. You know how, how, <laughs> how, how great can it be?" Um, no, but he was, he's been very, very good to me over the years, and uh, I was, it was, I was, it's, it's amazing to compete with your old boss, and uh, you know, and then have a horse like Laurel River. Unbel- unbel- unbelievable story. I'm, I'm, I'm really happy for you. It, 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 it was, it was. It was fun to watch. Uh, it, re- it really was. It was, it was a, a super exciting race. Now, how did you get the call from Judmont? How did that that go down? When did you first find out, and how did you find out you were going to have horses for Judmont? 
Um, I got an email um, from the CEO of uh, Judmont, Mr. Douglas, and um, and they, it was a very polite email. They were they were like, we um, we would be uh, you know we would be happy if you could train for us. And I was like happy. I was I was I was <laughs> that you know, they picked me to do it. Um, I'm not sure, but you know they they must have seen something that we do. Um, I was lucky enough to be. Uh, champion trainer in my first year um, in Dubai and then I had a grade one winner in the first year as well which uh, which was Switzerland who won the golden Shaheen so you know I, I I had a I had a good start but I've got I've got some very very good people who, who who work with me and you know make it make it all this possible yeah that that's that's uh, that, that's great and you know what else is, is interesting you know Switzerland is a horse that also started in the United States and I want to say he was with Steve Asmussen, wasn't he? Um, or was he with, he was with Steve, right? Yes, yes. I think he was with Steve Asmussen. And then maybe previous, before that, he could have been with Brad Cox. I'm not sure, but I know definitely he was here. Steve Asmussen brought him here to Dubai to race as well. I do remember right. that, yes. You know, it, it's just interesting because, you know, you've won big races with horses that were trained by, you know, top, Top Alfreds in the in the in the United States, and you don't often see horses uh, improve outside of certain barns. You know, it's 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 just you know those guys usually spot their horses well and get the most out of them. So to have success with horses coming out of those barns, uh, being a, a relatively new name on that stage is is just you know, really is a, a statement as to your horsemanship and, 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 your, and your ability to keep these horses and at that top level and even improve them a little bit. So, uh, I mean, yes, I mean, they are, you know, I, I, I look up to those trainers, you know, they've, uh, you know, the records they've set and, you know, things they've done They're Like I said, they are, they're the legends of the sport, actually, to be honest. Um, I don't know what different we did, but I think, I think what happens in Dubai, because we have six months of racing, um, you know, we have to mandatory six months of racing because of weather permitting. It gets right. a little bit warm, um, you know, to, to train horses in the summer. And, and I think it works perfectly. This is the reason we have horses. They, they race for a long period of time, you know, when they're older horses. And, you know, we can give them that time off and then freshen them up and, you know, get those legs freshened up and, you know, start them back again. So I think the longevity of these horses uh increase as well because of that reason i mean look I, I don't know but i think that is that is a that is something that's different from the united states and i'm, I'm glad you brought that up because i was going to talk to you a little bit about that and i and i think you do know i think you're hitting on something that i think is a is a fundamental difference in in racing in the united states and and other parts of the world even europe and you know certainly dubai where that downtime Okay, translates to being beneficial for the horses for longevity, soundness, uh, and even just performing at a, at, at a higher level. I think the, the off time does well. I think one of the reasons we have a problem, and I, I'm, I'm curious to hear your opinion on this, in, in the United States with keeping horses in training and keeping them good for long periods of time and having a lot of top class top shelf older horses is because we really don't have a downtime you know we run 12 months out of the year somewhere so there's always racing and i think owners are always pressuring trainers to just keep their horses in training because that's that's how they earn you know they earn money so can you talk a little bit about uh Bupat, the differences in the philosophies and the you know the styles and the horsemanship that goes into all of that and and how important you think that downtime actually is you know i i i cannot comment about the economic sense of it because i don't know uh you know how the owners in the united states um uh, fare when it comes to investment into horses and their um um you know the profits are, you know, I don't, I don't know the economic sense of it, but, uh, you know, we're in Dubai. If you see the facility we have, it is next to none. These are seven star hotels. And, uh, you know, we've got swimming pools for horses. We've got treadmills, we've got spa, we got, uh, cryo chambers, you know, so, and paddocks. So they all get turned out in paddocks, you know? Um, so I think it's a little bit of a, 
different training setup here. Um, obviously, you know the you know his Highness Sheikh Mohammed, who's 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 uh, the biggest race horse owner in the world. His his passion and love for horses. You know we get we get all these facilities, literally seven star facilities to train because you know it's it's for the goodness of horses what they want to do. And I think I think maybe that's that does pay off somewhere. Yeah, I I I I, I have to agree. Uh, you know, one thing that's interesting, you know, it's Kentucky Derby coming up. Uh, the Japanese horse, uh, Forever Young, won, won won the Saudi race and 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 the and the UAE Derby uh, on on your big day and your big night over there. Uh, but no horse has ever won the UAE Derby and gone on to win the Kentucky Derby, which I'm of the opinion that it's like one of those things that just it's going to happen eventually. You know, it just 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 hasn't worked out. And there's just so much that goes into winning the Derby beyond having the best horse. Uh, what's your take on that as someone who's based in Dubai uh, and, you know, as familiar as anybody with the training there and how, how things happen? You know, I, I, so this is, this is how lucky I am. I had in my first year in, first year as a, as a licensed trainer, uh, okay. I had a horse who, who, who went to the Kentucky Derby from here because he was second in the UA Derby and we had enough points to get there. Um, the, you know, the reason being the logistics are so difficult. Um, so we take a horse from here, goes to land in Chicago, and he cannot, he cannot come out, out of the quarantine for six days. So you can't train a horse right. you know, for six days. So first of all, you're going so far away and then you can't train for six days. And then you go, you, you, you van it up to, um, up or down to, to Churchill Downs. Uh, I think the logistics is, are, are very, very difficult on, on horses who travel from here. So I think if there was a little bit ease in that, it would have been a little bit easier. And, but I don't say that they won't be able to do it because I think Japanese know how to travel. You know, they, they have learned the art of traveling because you see masses of horses traveling, you know, into different uh, racing jurisdictions and doing very well. You know, overall, everybody doing well. So I think it's going to happen very soon. It just, um, I think we'll just have to figure out the logistics. And it's very, very uh, uh, expensive. You know, it's, uh, it takes a lot. To, to send a horse over from here to to go and race in Kentucky Derby, but I think I think I think with some time I think it's going to happen, and hopefully it'll be one of mine one day. <laughs> that that would be that 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 would be nice to see. If that happens, you well, you got to come back on the show then definitely. Hundred percent, absolutely. Okay. Right. Let me ask you, uh, Bupat, what what's it like to work for um, Godolphin and and Sheikh Mohammed and 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 be a part of that operation. Everybody knows how you know first class it is, and you know how much passion he has for the horses, and how you know you know just world class the entire operation is. But give us a little insight, you know, from your insider perspective for what we may not know. You know, I actually don't work for Godolphin, and I no, you did at one time. You said no, 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 no. I oh. I work for. I work for the sons of, of, of his highness. So it wasn't, okay. uh, it's, it's not Godolphin and I'm directly never worked for him. Okay. Uh, but just the facility we have are, are, are owned by them and they are, and they subsidize, uh, the training fees to the owners, uh, who wants to own horses in Dubai. So it's so highly subsidized and they own these, and they give these five star, seven star facilities. So, so the, because they want to promote horse racing in, in, in this country. And, uh, it is it is such a noble cause because I mean I don't train at all anymore for for the Maktoum family. I only have private owners, and I've got I've got owners from all the way from America to 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 Canada to you know locals here from Dubai and expats and uh, English Irish. So I've got I've got owners from everywhere in the world. Um, I just get given this amazing facility to train on. That's all. Right. Right. No, I understand. And I apologize. I thought you I thought you had mentioned that you worked for the, for him, not for the sons. So my bad. I apologize. No, no, I'm just I'm just in the country. I mean, I just right. I just received the benefits, but uh, yeah. I don't I don't work for them. No. OK. Um, how do you I like work for Dubai Racing Club, which right. is in part owned by them? Yes. Right. How do you like living in Dubai? Dubai is like Hotel California. Once you check in, you can never leave. <laughs> <laughs> It's 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 my home. It's uh, you know when I first came here 21 years ago from the U.S. 
you know, I left I left a lot of friends behind in the U.S. And uh, you know, I thought you know I thought I'll be here for two years, and I'm, you know, I'll probably go head back to the U.S. But it's it's uh, it's it's one of the safest places in the world. You know, that's why the whole world is moving here, and right. it's got every facility in the world. And now. You know, I bought a house and I've got a dog, you know, my daughter's been born here, goes to school here. So this is home now. And um, I, I, in my in my opinion, it's the best place in the world to live. Right. Now, a couple of people uh, commented in, in, in uh, you know, social on social media and, and publicly that Laurel River was done for the year and might not run until the Dubai World Cup next year. Do you have any plans for him yet? Have you mapped him out? Because when, 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 what I heard was that you said you didn't have any plans per se for the rest of the year, but not that he was necessarily not going to run at all. Can you clarify that a little bit? Do you know what what, what you're going to do with him? Yeah, you know what? I, I, I just need to, because the, the dust hasn't settled here. You know, we've, we've, just, uh, we've just raced. So, you know, I wanted to monitor the horse, how he came out of the race, and he's come out really well. Um, now we just need to sit with the team at Judd Mountain, you know, from America and UK and, and, and the princess. And um, I'm going to have a meeting with them in the next, I think, two weeks. And, you know, we'll, we'll map out a plan. But at the minute, you know, he's run three times and he deserves a little well-deserved rest. And, uh, you know, he's, he's getting some active rest where he's, where he's swimming and he's, he's not losing fitness, but he's, you know, he's not, he's not fully, fully training, but he's, but he's still staying fit. Right. And, um, and then we'll map out a plan. It's, I think their main, I think the main goal was to go to the Saudi Cup, uh -huh. um, and and then the Dubai World Cup after that. So because Saudi Cup comes before the World Cup, uh, right. on the on the calendar, um, but we still have to sit down and, and make a plan. It could be, I'm not sure. It could be, uh, you know, if they want me to go for the Breeders Cup, we'll do that. Or, you know, the horses, the horse is fine and it's come out of the race well. But we just got to sit down and have a little plan. Yeah, I was going to ask you if the Breeders' Cup was a was a possibility. Well, everything is a possibility. Um, right. We'll just have to, like I said, I, I I don't know myself to be honest. Uh, I'll just have to sit down with them and then, uh, you know, have a come up with a little game plan. Yeah, I, I've always been a fan. You know, I, I I like to bet on the horses, and 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 I've always been the kind of you know better that when horses run in Dubai, you know, horses in America. I would tend to lean to the ones that didn't run back so quick when they got back here. I like them after that trip all the way over there to travel, different type of racing. Uh, there was a time that they used to come back and go back on Lasix. Now they don't. Uh, they stay off Lasix. But I always thought that was a kind of a disadvantage and they needed more time to acclimate. So I'm of the opinion that, you know, after a tough race over there in Dubai, Time is good, you know. I, I I think they deserve some time off if you want to bring them back at that level. So I I I definitely get that. Uh, how yeah. many? Do you have? Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no. I, yeah, I, I I absolutely agree with you. I, you know, I've I've seen over the years um, when horses were brought back from the American horses brought back from uh, from Amer from Dubai to back to America. Yeah, they historically they always needed time and. I remember watching Silver Charm and some of these horses. You know, they were they were brought back, and I think I think time was a thing they they all needed a little bit. Yeah, no, I I agree. How many do you have in training there now? I've got 110. Wow. Um, <laughs> no, well, I've got 135 stables, so I got 15 empty. You can send me some if you want. <laughs> I would need to get a really good one to send 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 them to you. So. Well, we got very high prize money, so you know we're. Uh -huh. we're and I think the prize money is going up again next year. So, wow. I think, yeah, I, I keep that in mind. I got I, I would have to be the right kind of horse, you know, <laughs> Not 100 percent. need a really fast one. Um, so you, you've got 110 there uh, run six months out of the year. Yeah, they stay. Where, where do they go for the six months that they're down? Do they stay there? Well, look, they only get about two and a half months holiday. So. Uh, or or vacation, uh, you know they yeah they they stay here. They go in the grass paddocks very early in the morning. So every horse, if I have 110, every one of them, but not 110 stay all the same time because some get sold. And now right. I'm going to all the sales in the world. I'll be on the 15th. I'm in UK Newmarket. Then I come back and I go to France for the Arcana sale, and okay. from there I go to the US for the Maryland 
uh, Maryland sale, the uh, Phasic Tipton sale, and then I come back to Ireland, and then I come back to Dubai. So um, there'll be a lot of uh, purchases going on in the in the summer. But the horses who stay here, they would all get some paddock time. So it's good for their mind, which is, you know, right. which is great. They'll all go in the swimming pool. They'll all go to the spa. They'll all go to the cryo. So, and, and the treadmills, you know, so they'll get some kind of active rest, but they'll get, uh, you know, they'll get some mental vacation as well and uh, come back with fresh legs. Uh, any other horses in your barn that we might see here in the States at some time during the year at the Breeders' Cup or something like that? Any, any with you know that kind of potential yeah we did uh well we had we had Puz who won the golden shaheen right uh, he was a very impressive winner but you know he's seven years old and uh this year he ran in dubai first time he was very impressive took him to saudi he wasn't used to that track because he does like very fast tracks so i think the tracks in america will suit him probably um but he's seven year old i think i think a prize money is very good here Probably, well, we can go to the race in, at Churchill on Derby Day, the sprint, the million dollar sprint. Um, but then, like I said, the logistics of it is 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 quite difficult. Either we go stay there for about four or five months and, you know, train him from there or or just keep him safe for, for the season here. So I think we might just keep him here and, you know, not travel with him. He's seven. If he can win another Golden Shaheen, that'll be that'll be amazing. Like yeah. like like other Switzerland. Right. Yeah, that, that 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 would be. You know, you're building up uh, quite a quite a respectable resume from from that base over there. So, you know, if you can stay home, stay home, especially for the kind of money that you guys have. You know, well, that's it. You know, so I mean, you know, don't don't try to fix it if it's not broken. And uh, it's 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 working so far. For us, our pinnacle of racing is the Dubai World Cup night, and I kind of I kind of train everything that we we need to peak about. The World Cup time, and you know, so the prep race is into it, and uh, and we work backwards from there. So, um, you know, if I think if we take him to to the U.S., which you guys have some very good racing, I think we'll be we'll be in two different bases here and there, and you know, the logistics of it can get uh, a bit expensive, and I think we might not have the same horse here. Uh, we might not have a fresh horse here coming back again. Right. You know, you you, you said something I want I, I, I want to touch on because I think it's it's it's. I think it, it's it's one of the things that makes a great trainer. Uh, you mentioned, you know, getting horses to peak on Dubai World Cup night. Uh, you know, here, guys, you know, like one of Bob's Baffert's things is getting horses to peak on, you know, Derby Day or Breeders' Cup Day or, you know, one of those days. What does it take from a trainer to to do that? Is it you know, using racing and races as stepping stones? Is it more how you train the horse in the morning? Like what goes into getting a horse to peak when you want him to peak? Yeah, you know, I think it's a bit of a bit of a boat. Um, first of all, your training methods and uh, and then, you know, and, and, and to pick the races, right? Races to have enough gap so they can have good recovery, you know, between the races and... Uh, you can't have a tired horse going into a championship race. You know, you cannot go to Olympic finals when you're, you know, when you when you, when you're feeling the when you're feeling the races and trains, you know, and 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 training. So, I think it's it's an ability. I, look, I'm not, a, you know, I'm not a world expert on training race horses. I've I've been lucky enough to have a couple of good winners. I, I, I disagree, but go ahead. <laughs> um, yeah, in my opinion, I think you know you got to choose your races, and you got to have enough gap it between races that you can, you can give them enough recovery time, and you know try and try and work. You know, in, in my opinion, you know I'd have a horse ninety percent fit going into the first race and let him improve from the race a little bit as well, instead of training them hard enough that they that they're that they're leaving the races you know at the at the training ground. So, and then improve from there on. That's what that's what I like to do usually, and that's why I got beat. Uh, that's why I got Laura River beat the first time because I was too easy on him, and uh, and I thought his class is going to come through. Um, and I ran him in the six furlong race, which I mean he showed a lot of speed to me, but because he hadn't run for a long time, I was I was I was trying to be careful with him, and you know I was I was just trying to be uh, easy with him, and I think I got him beat the first time. <laughs> That's it, 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 interesting, but you 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 learned enough to make sure he didn't get beat on on uh, on the big night, so that's okay. 
Well, yeah, well, I'm glad. You know, when it works out, you're a genius. When it doesn't, you know, you're a dud and we won't be right. Doing this. Yeah, well, horse racing, you know, that's the, you know, I, I always say horses humble everybody at some point, you know, they just <laughs> we get that we get the highest highs and sometimes the lowest lows where, you, where it humbles you. Yes, no, it does. Uh, l- let me ask you this because y- you know, we're, we're, we're us based. So what's your take, um, as somebody who trains in, in Dubai where racing is, you know, cliche carnival night, you know, I mean, it's just an un- 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 unbelievable show in, in Dubai that night. And, uh, you know, everything is so first class and, you know, we have a lot of issues here in, in American racing right now, and m- most of them are, are, are public. What's your take or perspective on racing in the U.S. right now and what can be done to maybe improve it and, 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 and make it a little better than it is? This is just my opinion. Um, you know, there's a lot of doom and gloom in American racing. While, while I think it's, you know, it's among the best racing in the world. And, you know, people need to take pride and, you know, keep their head high and, you know, um, maybe teach the world that, you, you know, in, in my opinion, you know, everything I have is true because of a horse. And, uh, you know, I think there is a misconception that people think that we treat horses the wrong way. No, a horse gives us everything. We know we... we we do whatever we can. We take the best care of these animals. You know, yes, there can be some places and some people where, you know, but it's a very negligible, very, very small number. So I think we need to get out of that negative persona about racing. We need to move forward and be very proud of it and then try to promote the sport in a, in, in a little bit different light. But look, I mean, I could be wrong. I'm sitting too far away to comment on it. But when I was there, when I worked in the U.S., I mean, you know, it was... I thought I thought this was one of the greatest racing in the world. And, you know, when I came to Dubai and Dubai, Dubai has always been good because, you know, they are very visionaries here. You know, they they always want to go forward and there's no doom and gloom. There's always pride in what we do, you know, and this is my only opinion. But, you know, I don't live there, so I'm not very sure. But it's sad to see all these racetracks closing because when I was in California, there was Golden Gate, Bay Meadows, Hollywood Park, you know, Pomona. You know, there were all these racetracks and, you know, now I believe there's only half of them left, which is, right. you know, which uh, I, I don't know. Is it is it that we're going towards more business end of it where racing doesn't, uh, econo- it's not making economic sense? So I don't I know. Think there's to- definitely but- economic factors that are are, are are playing into that. But I think that you're also correct in, in you know, we've got to get away from the doom and gloom and, and, and you know, educate people about how to how the sport really is and how you know most of the animals are, are are really treated and one of the things i i think that people lose sight of and and you know they kind of focus on it in our industry but every industry has issues every sport has problems every every all of them you know what i mean no 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 industry is, is perfect you can say oh well you know, Wall Street, the stock market, they've got problems there. They've got any any industry you want to go to, there's a negative and a, and, a, and a darker side to it. I mean, you know, everybody is not good. Everybody doesn't have the best interests out there, you know. And, you know, in, in our game, it seems like people latch on to whatever negativity they can and just focus on that and ignore, you, you know the positive, and I, I I think we need to get the positive out and 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 let people know how much some people do love their horses and how they do treat their horses, and you know that just seems to get missed somehow in in, in our sport, especially in the in the United States. Hundred percent, I agree. We need to we need to be proud of our sport. You know, we, I mean. You know, like I said, everything that I have in my life is given, you know, by a horse. And how can I not give back to them? You know, there is. So I think, and it's a very, very, very small fraction of, 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 of people or, or, or that part of the sport, which is, which maybe is, is on the darker side, but it is so small. And I don't know why people latch on to it. And, you know, every movie's got a villain and a hero, but, you right. know, every, movie usually has a happy ending and you know this is this is what we need to focus on and not on the not on the villains and not on the negative side of of, of anything uh, well said well 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 said Bupad. listen um i don't want to take more of your time I, I i so appreciate you coming on the show um 
you, you, you know, definitely a bright light in the game, and I appreciate that. And uh, in awe of of the success you've had and what you've you know you've made of your career and how you've uh, you know worked your way from you know tailor made to sitting in Dubai, resting on the du Dubai World Cup winner. And like I said, what a winner! He didn't just win; he 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 romped. Yeah, he's well. You know, this is what exceptional horses do. I was, I was just hoping that I don't mess him up. You know, it's. Uh, <laughs> I mean, the horse is just very good horse. I just all I did was just, you know, all I can't take that credit at all. I think I have, I've surrounded myself by some very, very good people and very hardworking people. And, you know, we just, we just try to, we just try to keep him healthy and happy. And, and, and I have a very good jockey, Ty Gosher, who's, who's been a twelve-time champion jockey in Dubai. So. I had a, I had a good pilot on him and a and a very willing partner you know who wanted to do it and got some good people working around him. Let me let me ask you one one last question. What if you would share it? Did you tell Tide in the paddock when you gave him a leg up? Well, we instructions or you know I don't need to give him instructions because he's a very very good jockey. But we had a plan in mind. You know we we uh, in the during the morning of the race uh, because he because he's my stable jockey. I see him every day. Um, he was there in the morning, and we went through all the horses, looked at all the videos of all the other horses, and we had a we had a game plan. We were drawn twelve. We were going to go. We were not going to be too minded about it. We were going to go forward and then have a look. If somebody was going too quick on the inside, then we might sit second. But we were going to we were going to go try up. You know, we we're going to try and get up there. And but he the, that horse has such natural normal natural speed that he's very pacey. And he just made uh, the jockey's job, Tiger Shea's job, very easy. When he jumped, he just he just took him there. He didn't have he did he did that very effortlessly. He did. He did. Um, when did you know in the race that you were pretty much home? How early in the race? You know, I have uh, I have won a few races on that track, and um, when he was when you when he was getting that breather on the on the backside and doing it that easy, when he was filling his lungs up. I was thinking it's going to take a very, very good horse. I know the two favorites uh, were both closers. They come from back. Uh, I was just hoping that he wasn't going to get those fractions one too quick and look like he was doing it easy. And about the three, I thought I thought we have it in the back, maybe. That's beautiful. Um, Bupa, thank you so much for coming on the show. Truly appreciate it. Wish you all the best. Uh, hope to see you at the Breeders' Cup running something. But if you're not running something, maybe you'll come visit us and uh, we'll get to say hello in, in, in person. Thank you so much. Appreciate appreciate you having me on the show. Thank you very okay. much. All, all the best. I'll shut this off and we can say a quick goodbye. Okay, perfect. They're off in the 2023 First Crop Sires race. Maximum Mischief makes the lead with the most two-year-old maiden special winners by any sire. On the backstretch, Matoli and Omaha Beach close the gap with stakes performers from coast to coast. Vino Rosso finds his best and leads on the turn with four grade one Colts on dirt. But it's Matoli with his third TDM Rising Star. Your champion freshman leading an impressive Spendthrift Superfecta. With new DRF All Access Pass Performances. With one best in class product, you now get all three past performance formats. Go to DRF.com and use coupon code one free PP for a free single card today. Mini, a top 10 first crop sire in 2023, standing at McMahon of Saratoga. 14 first crop winners, including My Shady Lady, My winner Shady of the $500,000 New York Stallion Series Fifth Avenue Stakes, Grade 2 winner, Winstock, and, and Stakes win winner, and Solo win Shot, Solo Me the seventh leading freshman sire and the only top 10 freshman sire with a grade one or grade two winner. He sired a $700,000 two-year-old at the OBS April sale. His juveniles sold for nearly six figures on average, more than 12 times the stud fee. Solomini, a controversial DQ from being a grade one winner by two-time horse of the year, Curlin standing at McMahon of Saratoga Thoroughbreds. Sure bet coffee, put the giddy up in your cup.
tracking trips with Pick 6 King John Stetton. It's one of the best tools in horse racing for any level of player. It's your second set of eyes, spotting troubled trips, betting angles, track trends, horses to watch and favorites to fade, 10 figs, ticket structure, and more. At Tracking Trips, you're a friend with benefits. Not a member? You must hate winning money. Join Tracking Trips now. Visit pastthewire.com and we'll see you in the winner circle. Remember, nobody does it better. Does it bad?